Does your digital assistant like Siri or Alexa perpetuate harmful gender biases? That's something Nandika Seth Kilmer Kumar examined in her school science project. The 14-year-old student at Edmonton's Aurora Academic Charter School recently got back from Mexico, where she was one of four Alberta students to showcase their science fair projects at the Expo Sciences International Fair. Good morning, Nandika. Good morning. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Was that a fun trip? Yeah, it was pretty fun. (laughs) Okay, cool. So tell us about your science project. What was it all about? Where where did it all come from? Well, my science fair came from a time in during early 2023 and late 2022 when chat gpt first gained popularity and from there i noticed a lot of students were using chat gpt for their everyday life um and i was wondering uh since i already had an alexa i was wondering why is it that siri alexa cortana and google and all those ai assistances um why are they marketed as female why do they have female names so my science fair was examining the social structures behind gender and also i conducted a survey consisting of around 110 participants um, where i tried to get international uh, people but i mostly got a demographic from canada which were immigrants Mm -hmm. and i got them to answer questions about their opinions on gender And I got to realize some harmful stereotypes that were running through communities as well. And I also got a lot of feedback on why people think personally AI is marketed as female. And I also discovered a lot about how AI perpetuates gender stereotyping. For example, the stereotype that females are meant to serve docile assistant like roles, especially in a lot of service tasks. Females um, participate in those type of uh, assistant jobs. So I came to a conclusion that marketing companies for AI assistances uh, label their AI assistances as female or in general just giving a gender to an inanimate object. Um, Their goal is to adhere to stereotypes we thought were gone with uh, society. And um, a lot of people have this belief that social media and Uh, Technology, especially AI, is straying away from stereotyping. It's our most progressive and advanced technology. But uh, it's uh, pretty intriguing to see that it's still running rampant when it comes to these type of stereotypes. Well, you know, it's interesting because in in a lot of the research that's been done about AI and that sort of thing, when they talk about racism, they find that a lot of AI will pick up on racism and become racist itself in yeah. some cases. Um, there were a few uh, studies done before on Alexa, mm-hmm. where uh, since she is defaultly female, and I believe if you want to change her voice to male, you have to go download an app and go into settings. Um, it's very uh, tedious process to change her voice to male. Um, a lot of studies have found that Alexa does uh, respond to users in a flirtatious way. Um, I haven't really looked deep into that, but mm-hmm. I did see that when I was doing my research for the science fair in early 2023. So what was the reaction you got from people when, when you presented these, these findings? <laughs> that, that's a good question. Because um, in the Canada-wide science fair that happened in May, um, when people came around for the public viewing, and this happened in Edmonton, the mm-hmm. Canada-wide science fair. Right. So uh, when people were coming around, I got a lot of uh, responses that were like, oh, I never thought of that. Yeah. But there were a few occasional people who were trying to challenge the idea, came up to me and started debates, um, which was uh, pretty, um, it was fun to debate with them. Right. Um, but it still... Um, It's interesting to see that point of view, I guess. Yeah, it is interesting to see that point of view, and I really appreciated it, um, seeing people who agreed with it, disagreed with it. Um, Actually, in my uh, questionnaire, I asked uh, a question saying, uh, are you willing to change your views based on scientific data? Mm -hmm. And most people said no, which was very interesting (laughs) to me. That's revealing. Yeah, that is revealing. What do you feel are the implications uh, of this kind of gender bias in AI? Uh, Not just gender bias, but as you mentioned before, racism and things like that. Um, It can be very harmful because it subconsciously reintegrates these gender stereotypes into our everyday lives. And AI is like our latest technology right now. People are using it for getting around, uh, asking what the weather is, things like that. So when it reinforces these gender stereotypes, I feel as though people just don't realize it and it can like still perpetuate these stereotypes and um 
recently I was looking into AI image generators. Those image generators that take people's pictures and turns them into cartoons. Right. And it has a lot of colorist biases. In so what it, way? It and maybe takes, explain that for people who may not know what it is. So colorism is basically the uh, bias uh, towards people of darker skin color. So even within a certain ethnic group, uh, people can be divided based on the shade of their skin. Right, and if they're lighter, they're favored, and if they're a little bit yeah, darker, if they're darker, they're, they're non-favorited. So what happens to darker skin people when they put their images through these AI cartoon converters? Uh, their skin gets very whitewashed, so wow. it doesn't support darker skins uh, for the most part. And also, a lot of face recognition. Um, nowadays, uh, I know India is currently developing a really broad and like very big project for face recognition. Um, I know a lot of them around the world. It can't properly recognize darker skinned faces. Yes, we've so. done we've done some stories on that over the years about how how that has been the case. Yeah, I'm pretty sure India is trying to get around that problem. Like they're trying to fix it right now, mm-hmm. but I don't think. Um, I haven't seen any news yet about it. So all of these um, biases, stereotypes in our technology can be very harmful to our everyday society. Is this something, this subject, something you'd like to pursue further, or do you see yourself expanding out further in your interest in science? Um, When it comes to science, I really, really like understanding how society works uh, just as a side curiosity but when it comes to uh, my career I'd really like to uh, work with the mind specifically neurobiology or psychiatry one of those two things but as a side hobby I really 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 love sociology and I really like looking into how people view each other so mm-hmm. this project was like a novel. It was taking something novel, but still adhering to those um, sociological like traditions of yeah. understanding people's minds. And I'm sure no matter what you pursue, AI in some ways is yeah, going to be a big part of it. Yeah, it's going to probably right? affect everyone at one point because AI has some promising results, but I feel as though there has to be very, very, very strong ethical protocols when it comes to AI. And I think that's something ChatGPT does a pretty decent job at. What grade are you in now? I'm in grade nine, but when I started my project, I was in grade eight. All right, so you got you got to go through high school first before you get, I, I was thinking, huh, what are you gonna take in university? But you got, you, got a, <laughs> you got a little bit of time to go, hey? Has this been a great experience doing this whole science project? Oh yeah, I met my best friends at Canada Wide Science Fair. So it was an amazing experience and going to Mexico as well. Um, I got to see so many things I've never seen before. So that was very interesting. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming in this morning to talk about it. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Nandika Senthil Kumar is a student at Aurora Academic Charter School here in Edmonton. Her project called Alex the AI That Doesn't Exist was recently showcased at an international science fair in Mexico.